We have already introduced ourselves the concept of power, that power is basically a function of dependency. But still, even though we know what power means, we still need to understand how can we use this power, what can we do with it, and what are these specific actions. And these are called power tactics. And we are going to learn about nine power tactics. And all of them should be used in slightly different situations. So let's see. We have them listed over here with a simple explanation. So the first one is called legitimacy. This is relying on your authority position or saying a request accords organizational policies. So in this case, we are really relying on some organizational policies. So that, for instance, we would like to have a, let's say, I don't know, clean environment for work. And that's said in our organizational policies that I, as an employee, should have always a clean environment around myself. So I can rely on this and, according to the legitimacy, ask for some improvement, maybe. As second, we have rational persuasion. This is simply presenting logical arguments and factual evidence to demonstrate a request is reasonable. We do this maybe most often when we are persuading our friends, colleagues, or maybe our managers. We believe that our request has really a logic behind and that it is reasonable. So we simply present it, present the logic, and we hope that we will, in a rational way, persuade the listener. As third, we have inspirational appeals. We would like to inspire someone so that we are developing emotional commitment by appealing to targets, values, needs, and hopes. So we, all of us have some values, needs, and homes so that I, as a speaker, will try to appeal to these values and needs. So for instance, uh, let's say that our colleague is a, is a coffee lover and I'm voting for improvement of our environment, of our offices, and now I'm now trying to persuade this my colleague that he should try to vote with me and so I will inspire him with uh, the possibilities that the new coffee machine would have for his uh, coffee passions. Let's go further. We have a consultation. This is simply increasing the target support by involving him or her in decision making. So again, let's um, by involving him or her. Let's imagine the situation that I'm not satisfied with the uh, state of my office and I would like to persuade my managers. So I will simply come to my colleague and I will try to involve him or her. I will ask him, hey, what do you think I should do? What do you think? How should I persuade the managers? This is the consultation. Then we have exchange. Rewarding the target with benefits or favors in exchange for following request. It's simple. You come to someone and exchange uh, the following request and say, well, I would need from you this little favor, but of course I will do something for you. This is simply an exchange. Then we have personal appeals, asking for comp compliance based on friendship or loyalty. So we have some friendship or loyalty. And maybe this can be surprising, but of course it's one, it's part of the power. It's one of power tactics. And, and it's important to keep that in mind because that's used quite often. Then we have ingratiation. This is using flattery, praise or friendly behavior prior to making a request. So that let's say I would like to ask my manager for a new coffee machine, but before I do so, I'm going to be super nice to him, nicer than ever before, so that at the moment when I ask for the new coffee machine, he will be in a nice mood and uh, he will more likely um, acknowledge this my request. Then we have pressure, using warnings, repeated demands and threats. The problem with pressure is, of course, that it can backfire. And I will make these notes. It quite often backfires. Uh, backfires. If we use the pressure on someone else, it is quite likely that it will not have positive consequences or not only positive consequences. And finally, we have coalitions. This is enlisting the aid or support of others to persuade the target to agree. So that it will not be only us, but also others, maybe our colleagues who will try 
uh, to make some change. And we create the coalition out of these, our supporters. Now, let's think about something interesting. When we imagine some simple organization, let's say it has, uh, let's say it has uh, three hierarchical levels, so that here are the employees, here is the manager, and here is the CEO, and I will just quickly make the connections, because this is quite important. Uh, so we have it over here. And let's think about the direction. Uh, let's think about the direction of, uh, of power or the direction of communication. Of course, there can be three. It can be upward, so it can go this way and then this way, so it can be upward. Then it can be also downward communication, so it will go from CEO to some manager and maybe from manager to some employee. And finally, there can be lateral, uh, lateral communication or lateral uh, persuasion, use of tactics. Now, let's think about what, which of these tactics can be used in which of these situations. Well, let's begin with the first one, which is the upward co communication or the upward use of power. When we are trying to persuade our manager about someone, and I have already said the word, we are trying to persuade, and that's over here. When we would like to uh, use a power over our manager, the only choice we really have is the use of rational persuasion. So let's make a small mark over here that this is successful in upward communication. And that's actually the only one that can be used in this case. Now let's think about the downward. So from a CEO to manager or from a manager to an employee. Well, of course, we can use legitimacy. So here we have uh, downward. We can use rational persuasion. Then we can try to inspire. This should be part of our job. Consultation, of course, we can try to encourage or, or involve our manager to take part in decision making. So downward over here as well. Then we have exchange, that's of course. Well, personal appeals, that doesn't fit here. We don't have to ask for compliance based on friendship or loyalty. It's simply stamped in the hierarchy. So this one doesn't go here. Then we have ingratiation. Then we have, of course, pressure. And coalitions, well, this doesn't again fit here. Now let's think about the uh, lateral, the horizontal. We again can begin uh, by legitimacy, then we can go for rational persuasion. Well, the book says, or the scholars agree, that inspirational appeals are not really useful for a lateral influence. So this one is not usable. Then we have a consultation, uh, then we have uh, exchange, personal appeals, ingratiation, of course, pressure. This one should not be used in a lateral sense, so we are only left with coalitions. So now you can see which of these kinds of power tactics can be used in upward, downward and lateral communication.